Thank you for tuning into this teaching. We hope this message blesses you. Our mission as Marigold Church is to do anything and everything so that anyone, everyone can encounter the real Jesus. We hope as you listen to this, you encounter the real Jesus. Let him transform your mind, transform your heart, and encounter you today. We're going to continue with kind of what we started last week with uh, enough is enough. And then last week we were just kind of going over how the gospel, the gospel is enough. And we were talking about uh, reconciliation in the Bible. And, you know, I guess reconciliation is something that's kind of a hot word right now, both in the uh, in the culture and in in the church as well, uh, mostly talking about racial reconciliation. Now, just us as a body, um, we've talked about it. We do not believe in in racial reconciliation um, only because uh, we don't believe in different races. Um, we we do believe in people groups and 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 things of that nature, but not not races. And so. Um, but we do understand the idea of, of, of reconciliation. And so our stance is very much so there will not be any kind of true reconciliation outside of Christ. And so we, I look, uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to go back and, and really look at, at that message. It kind of, if you'll look at a message we did uh, prior to this one called The Great Race, it'll kind of set that up. And um, and then we go into um, hashtag what really matters and then into uh, the current uh, conversation right, right now, which is uh, enough is enough. The gospel is enough. Uh, reconciliation in the gospel. And today we're going to talk about enough is enough. The gospel is enough. Uh, power in the gospel. And we're going to start in Romans chapter one, verse 16. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it's a very familiar passage. Uh, You see it on t-shirts and walls, and especially with youth groups, love this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, right? I am not ashamed of the gospel. And so that's something that that we see, you know, it's like, oh, I love it. But... uh, we also need to, to read the rest of it. It's, it's not just a battle cry. It's not just a go out and get them type thing. There's, there's also um, a lot more to it. So I'm going to read in, in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 14 through 20, and it'll kind of give a little bit more context to what exactly uh, Paul is saying, uh, the Apostle Paul is saying in Romans 1.16. In verse 14, it says, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Verse 15, so for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In verse 17, for In it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. I encourage you to to read that entire uh, chapter one of of Romans. And there's a couple of things that I want to I want to kind of pull out of this, a couple of points that I want to make today. And uh, the first is, uh, is just the inclusivity of the gospel. The gospel is inclusive. And that's important that we know that the gospel is inclusive. If you see a, a powerless church, it's because it's a church that does not preach the gospel. You can have a lot of good 
content. You can have a lot of good intentions, but without the gospel, you have no power. And so with this idea that the gospel is inclusive, and if we go back to verse 14 and the verse 16, Paul says, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians. So if you're either a Greek or a barbarian, the gospel's for you. Both to the wise and to the foolish. So if either you're wise or you're a fool, the gospel is for you. And then verse 16, either to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So if you are Jew or Greek, so it it includes all of us. So Jew or Gentile, wise or foolish, the gospel is for you. We are all invited to encounter the gospel. Now in verse 20, There's this idea that I've kind of come out of and I feel like it's 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 something that's still very prevalent. And and it's something that I feel like I'm in a lot of ways. I'm still trying to shake off, which is that the gospel has to be repackaged in a way that it can be a little bit more palatable for people. That it can be just a little bit, if we can just change the way it looks a little bit, maybe more people will come to the gospel. Maybe more people will come to church if we dumb it down a little bit. And in verse 20, it says this, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes. What are his invisible attributes? He goes on to clarify what that is. God's invisible attributes are this, eternal power and divine nature. It says, goes on, it says, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. He's talking about nature. He's talking about everything that he's put in place, rather from the the grass outside to the stars in the sky to every living animal to the way you and I are created, everything points back to the gospel. Everything points back to God in his divine nature and his eternal power. So this idea that we have to make the gospel more fun and, and you know, liven it up a little bit, and it, 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 it really it kind of goes against the power of the gospel. Because, it, like I said, it's like we got to fluff it a little bit. We got to water it down. My dad, my dad loved to, to drink alcohol. And one of the things he said is never trust a man who will water down his whiskey. And so I would say it would be equally don't, don't trust a pastor who will water down the new wine, who will water down the gospel. See, we are all invited to encounter the gospel. Our very conscience is drawn to the gospel, the attributes of God. Now, I understand the good intention of it. And like I said, I'm not pointing fingers as much as I'm saying this is where I came from. And I've had to turn from that. The gospel is inclusive. It, 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 it brings everyone in. It invites everyone. So there's no one that will ever stand before God and say, well, I, I didn't hear it. Well, well, they didn't preach it to me in the way that I liked it. The, the church that I saw was kind of boring. I, it's a very Western way of looking at, at, at the gospel. Because what about the, those who live in, in indigenous places all over the earth? Are you saying that because they never heard a preacher go and preach it in, in their way, that they're some, somehow exempt? And he says, no. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, the eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse we don't have any excuse 
And I'll explain why I, I believe more and more people do this. But before that, let me go to the next point, which is the gospel, the gospel is not only inclusive, the gospel is exclusive. Now, how can you be both? In verse 16, he says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm going to pull out some words and make another sentence. The gospel is the power of God to everyone who believes. The gospel is powerful only to those who will believe it. You see, the entire world, if we look, just look on the news, look on social media, look on, on, you know, whatever... Uh, your news apps you have or just wh- however you get your news. It's, it's very clear. It's very evident. The world is crying out for a savior, mm-hmm. a savior from disease. Right now we're in the middle of this uh, COVID-19. A savior from economic struggles. We got people being losing their jobs, losing their businesses a savior for our families. We see families having to be home together in a way that they'd never been home before. We see uh, uh, domestic violence up. We see abuses up. The world is crying for a savior for our planet, for our resources. A savior for each other. You see people and you, God, they need you. And a savior from each other. A savior for each other. And then also you turn on the news, you see violence, you see things of that nature. And you realize we don't need just a savior for each other. We need a savior from each other. Years ago, I was separated from my first wife. And she'd left to live with her parents. And unbeknownst to me, she was with in a, or in a relationship with another man. And so during this time, I was doing everything I thought possible to mend our relationship. And it seemed like the more I tried, the worse things got. And I was deeply discouraged by this, the entire thing. I, I, I could not wrap my mind or my heart around what was going on. And I never thought I would ever go through a divorce ever in my life. And here we were at the, at the onset of divorce. And I spoke to my pastor about it. Pastor Joe, great man of God, just wonderful influence in my life. And I spoke to him about just how rejected I was feeling. And he said something that honestly, it didn't sell, sell well with me at the time. He said, at this point, she's not rejecting you, Paul. She's rejecting Christ. And it bothered me because it wasn't Christ she was hanging up the phone on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Christ who she was keeping the kids from. It wasn't Christ who she was uh, seeing this other man behind, or so I thought. I I thought it wasn't against Christ. And honestly, in the moment, it felt more like some hyper spiritual attempt at just grasping straws. Like, oh, this, this, is the, this is a pastoral thing to say. But none of it made any sense to me until one day she came out and said what was really at the heart of her issue. And she spoke directly to my face and she said the following. And I quote, You have a great family. I like your family. You're a great husband. There's nothing in this world you wouldn't do for me. And you're a great father. The kids are lucky to have a father like you. This was the last moment she ever had foot in the house. 
The door was open. She was in the doorway. She's telling me this as she's about to walk out. The minivan full of stuff, all the kids stuff, clothes, toys. Before she walks off, she pauses and says, after while she says that, she says that in the doorway, she, before she walks out, she says, I just don't want you. As much as the world is crying out for a savior, the world rejects, rejects the Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, period. And it seems that more and more of the church or quote unquote church is rejecting him too. And many, either by word or by deed, are saying something like this. You have a great family. I like your family. You're a great husband. There's nothing in this world you wouldn't do for me. There's nothing in this world you haven't already done for me. And you're a great father. We sing it. You're a good, good father. And we're lucky to have a father like you. We just don't want you. We want everything that you have to offer. We want peace. We want justice. We want reconciliation. We want love. We want joy. We want an abundance in our lives. But Jesus, we just don't want you. The hardest thing for a pastor or anyone who has really encountered the word is to understand that there are those who will encounter Jesus and reject him. That's a hard thing to grasp for a believer. When we see what God has pulled us out of, we just think, Maybe they're just not hearing it right. Maybe, maybe if we just dumbed it down a little bit, maybe if we fluffed it up a little bit, maybe if the songs were just a little bit more jazzy. Maybe if the buildings were just a little fancier. Maybe if the sound system was a little bit more state of the art, maybe if, if our posts were just a little bit better. Maybe as a pastor, if I was just a little bit more woke and in, in tune with the culture. Many will encounter Jesus and many will reject him. And many will receive him in the beginning and reject him later on. But many will believe his gospel and call on him and be saved through the power of the gospel through faith. The question is only this. Which group will you be in? Will you be one who hears the gospel and rejects it? Or will you embrace the power of the gospel? Ultimately, that is what our soul cries out for. It's what our heart cries out for. Is to know God, to encounter Jesus. But we live in a very, very, very loud culture. And the Spirit of God is a very small, still voice. And He is not going to shout at you. He is not going to bend your arm and twist your arm to His will. He will simply whisper. A few weeks ago, we talked about 
and a message called Hiding Behind the Badge. That he called out to Adam and asked Adam, where are you? And I believe that in this message or in the message of the gospel, the Holy Spirit is asking, where are you? Which group will you be in? When it's all said and done. Will you be someone who's trying to please the world. Trying to please man. Or is your heart truly set on God. And you can fool people around you. You can even fool yourself for a while. But you can't fool God. You know, it's a scary thing and, and we'll be getting into it next week. Kind of a funny uh, title, but next week's title will be Enough is Enough, The Gospel is Enough, Terrorists and Televangelists. And there is going to be a, a falling away and there's also going to be a great awakening in the church and I look forward to seeing what God does in this time as we look in his word we see where he did some of the greatest things in the darkest of times Lord I thank you I thank you father for your word for your gospel word your good news father your good news that I don't have to be powerless on this world, on this earth, in this world. But Lord, I can lean on you and have the power that saves me, that saves me from the old me. I thank you, Lord God, for dying in my place so that I could live for you. To be who you've called me to be and do what you've called me to do. I thank you, Lord God, that you would give me boldness to speak your word. That you would give each and every one of us boldness to not only speak your word, but to live it. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this time, for protecting us, for blessing us, for being our source and our provider. We thank you, Lord God, for just good news and good, uh, just a good testimony of what's to come. I thank you, Lord God, when we call on your name, you're quick to save. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we call on your name. I thank you, Lord God, for just continuing to show yourself. in a way that you've never shown yourself to people. I thank you, Lord God, that people would be drawn to your word just without any rhyme or reason, just, I just need to hear the word. I just, I just need to pick up a Bible. I don't know why. I just need to download a Bible app. I can't explain it. I just need to hear what it says for myself. I don't need a watered down gospel. I need it straight. I thank you, Father, that you're bringing more and more people to your kingdom. In Jesus name. Amen. Hey, if this message or any of the content that we've been putting out has blessed you and you're wondering how you can partner with us in generosity, there are a couple ways to do that. You can download the PushPay app and you can search Marigold Church and you can give that way. You could also set up reoccurring giving and it's really user friendly. It makes it really easy to give. You could also text Marigold to 77977 and give that way. 
We believe God moves through a generous heart. And so we would love to see what God does through you as you partner with us and as we walk through this journey together.